I will show you how to create a chicken NPC complete with animations and a state machine. For the state machine there will be two states which is idle and walk. There will be different walk cycles so that there is a little variation in the game between each of the chicken NPC characters. I will also cover how to use a navigation agent 2D with avoidance enabled and then we will use a navigation region 2D so that your chicken can move within a specified area. In a previous tutorial I've shown you how to create a tile map and use Y sort layers. So before we create our chicken NPC let's just create a duplication of this scene. So let's just click on test scene tile map layer Y sort and you can find this in the scenes folder under test. Let's just right click and duplicate and we'll call this test scene NPC chicken and then just click duplicate. Then we'll close the test scene tile map layer Y sort and just open up the test scene NPC chicken and then F2 and we'll rename this as test scene NPC chicken and just save the scene. Now we've still got some remnants of our last test scene. However, we want to keep these same tile map layers. So click on undergrowth, go to tile map, click the erase tool and then choose the square and then just click to remove those previous tiles. Click overgrowth and then just click and drag to remove those tiles. And then the last one is objects and just remove those trees. And then we can save the scene again. Now we are ready to create our non-playable character chicken and create a new scene. So click scene, new scene and then choose other node and then search for character body 2D. Press F2 to rename and call this chicken. Then go to the scenes and characters and create a new folder and call this chicken. Then let's save our scene, click on scenes go to characters and in chicken just save the chicken scene here. So we've now got the chicken scene here and we'll start to add our collision shape, animations and state machine. So let's add a child node and then search for animated sprite 2D and then create that node. Inside of sprite frames let's create a new sprite frames and then just activate that and then rename this animation from default to idle and just set that to be default on load. Then click the add frames option and go to the assets folder and in the game, go to characters and then choose chicken sprite. Click open, let's just zoom in. Just hold control and mouse wheel to zoom. And then let's just say horizontal is four, but the vertical is two. Then choose the first two sprites for our idle animation and click add frames. Then let's just zoom in and press play. Okay, this is now animating and we'll leave the looping on for this. So just click stop. Then just click back on the animated sprite 2D node and then press the up arrow key to sit the chicken feet on the X axis. So this is now just sat on the X axis at zero. Then go chicken, add child node and then choose collision shape. And in the shape option, choose the circle shape. And then let's just reduce the size of that and just move that up. Let's save the scene. Then click back on animated sprite 2D. And then let's add a new animation. Let's just double click that and rename this to walk. Click add sprite frames and then choose chicken sprite again. Open. Let's zoom in and then choose these four sprite frames here and add four frames. We'll leave it on looping again. And then let's just play that. Okay, let's stop. In a previous tutorial, I have shown how to use a state machine for a player character. I will show you how to use a state machine for our NPC. So just click on chicken, add child, and then just choose node and create that. F2 and we'll rename this to state machine. Then let's go to our scripts folder and in the state machine folder, let's just click and drag the node state machine script onto the state machine node. Then click on the state machine node and use add child node. Choose node again and we'll rename this node to idle and then choose attach script. We will call this idle state and we'll save this in the characters and chicken folder. So just create that. Then in the scripts folder and state machine folder, just open the node state script 
use Control A to select all and then copy this code and go back to the idle script and we'll just paste that in. Copy node state and then replace this on the extends node and then just delete that class and then just remove these two items here. And this will set up our script to create the idle node state. Now let's use some export variables. So say at export variable character and then we'll use this character body 2D and then at export again variable animated sprite 2D and then animated sprite 2D. Then click on state machine and then just set the initial node state to be idle. So when the game starts, the first state will be our idle state. Then click on idle and let's assign the export variables and then animated sprite 2D and choose our animated sprite. Now the reason why we are exporting variables is because when we then do the cow NPC, you will be able to reuse these two states. So the idle and walk state are the same. And this is where we get to use reusable states so that when you start to create many NPCs, it becomes faster because you can reuse lots of these nodes and components. So when we then enter the idle state, let's then begin our animation. So we can say animated sprite 2D, play, and then just write idle. And then for on exit, just stop the animation. Now we are ready to start testing our chicken NPC. So just go to scenes, test scenes, and open up the test scene NPC chicken. Then go to the 2D view and let's add our chicken to the scene. So go back to scenes and characters and chicken and then just click and drag the chicken into our scene. Then to run the current scene, just click this button here and we can now see that the chicken is on the scene and is currently in the idle state. Let's just stop the scene. And to confirm that our chicken is in the idle state, let's go back to our state machine script, load node state machine, and then in the physics process function, re-enable the print statement here so that when the state machine is running, we print this state to our output console. Once that is done, just let's go back to our view and then run the current scene again. And as you can see, the current state doesn't have an output here. And this is because I've not set the current state node name as it's been initialized. So I'm just going to close the window, go back to the node state machine script and copy this line here on line 48 and just paste that line on line 19. So when we set the current node state, I also get the current node state name and that is on the initialize of Reddit. Let's just test the scene again. And as you can see, it's got the correct state here. So we can now debug the state transitions. I'm just gonna close the window. And in the test scene, I've put the chicken under the game tile map. So I'm just gonna move that back out of there and put that under the test scene root node. That will just fix that. And then head back over to the chicken scene and let's begin creating a transition to our walk state. So click on state machine, add child node, choose node, click create, and then F2 and call this walk. Let's right click and then attach a new script and we'll save this as walk state. And we'll save this in characters and the chicken folder. Click create, open up the node state script again and let's copy the code go back to the walk state script and paste that in. We'll copy node state and change the node part here, remove the class name. So we extend the node state script and then just remove these two items at the top. And this will just set up the state script. Now to transition from idle to walk, let's just go to our idle script and we need to modify our on next transitions method here. However, we will leave the chicken idling for a time interval. Then when the time interval has elapsed, we will move from idle to the walk state. So in our idle state script, create an on ready variable and we'll call this idle state timer. Use the timer and then let's create a new instance of our timer, which you can do that by just saying timer.new and create a new export variable called idle 
state time interval, which is of type float, and we'll set this to a default value of five seconds. The next step is to override the ready function and get the idle state timer, and then for the wait time parameter, just assign our idle state time interval. Then we need to create the timeout connection. So we'll say idle state timer dot timeout, and then connect that timeout signal. And we'll say on idle state timeout, and then create that function. Return a void, and for now, just write pass. And then because we've created the timer inside of our script, we need to make sure that we add this node to our scene. So we can do that by just saying add child and just pass in the idle state timer. Now create another variable. So we say var idle state timeout, which is a Boolean, and we'll just set this to a default value of false. Then in the on idle state timeout method, we can just set this value to true once the timeout interval has been reached. Then in our on next transitions, we say if idle state timeout is true, then transition emit and transition to the walk state. Then in the on enter method, the idle state timeout equals false. So every time we go into our idle state, we always reset the timer and then start the timer again. And when we exit the idle state, we can just say idle state timer and then we'll stop the timer. Then on the chicken scene, let's go to our walk script and we'll do some more export variables here. So we can copy and paste the two export variables for the character and the animated sprite 2D. So let's just copy and paste those in, then click the walk node and in the inspector, let's just assign chicken to the character and then the animated sprite 2D as well. And in on enter, let's say animated sprite 2D play and then set the walk animation. And then when we exit the walk state, we just want to turn off the animation. Now let's head over to our test scene NPC chicken and let's just test the scene. And as you can see in the output window, we've got current state idle and we're going to wait until the chicken goes into the walk state. We can now see that current state is walk, but we're also picking up the debug message for our player, which is currently in the idle state. So let's head over to the state machine script, go back to chicken and then go to our state machine script. And at the top of the node state machine script, let's add another variable for parent node name, which is a type of string. Then at the top of the ready function, say parent node name equals get parent dot name. Then copy the parent node name variable and inside the print statement, just paste this as the first parameter, comma, and then add a space. We can now clear the output log using this button here, and then let's test the scene once again. So we've currently got now player current state is idle, which is this node here, and then we've got chicken current state walk. So we now know that our chicken has transitioned from idle state to our walk state. Let's just close the window. Now back in our chicken and walk state script, we need to complete the ability for the chicken to walk between two different points in our game. So to achieve this, we're going to use a navigation region 2D. So back on test scene NPC chicken, let's add a child node, search for node 2D, and then rename this to chickens. And inside of here, just add another child node and search for navigation region 2D. Then in our view, in navigation region 2D, we have a property called navigation polygon. So just create a new navigation polygon and then start to draw a polygon shape. Once we've created the polygon shape, click bake navigation polygon. This will then set up a region which will allow the chicken to move within. Then I'm just gonna click and drag the chicken and pop that under chickens and then go back to the chicken scene right click chicken add child node and then add a navigation 
Agent 2D as a child, so just create that. And we'll just move that above the state machine node. Then back on the NPC chicken test scene, click on navigation region 2D, click on the navigation polygon, and then for navigation layers, let's just edit layer names. For layer one, we'll call this chicken navigation. Then head back to the chicken scene, and then just hover over navigation layer one, and you can see that it's already set to the chicken navigation. Head to the chicken and go to navigation agent 2D and leave this already on one, which is chicken navigation. And what we're saying is that the chicken is associated with the navigation layer, which is the chicken navigation. Now let's head back over to the walk state script and let's begin by creating the ready function. So override ready, and then let's also create a character setup function. So I'll say function character setup and return void. Then inside the character setup, we want to do an await, get tree and await for the first physics frame. Now, when we use navigation region, the navigation agent needs to wait after the first physics frame and then starts to process the next target. So we're going to create another function and call this set movement target, which will also return a void. Then back in the character setup, let's call set movement target. Then in the ready method, use call deferred and we will call the character setup method. Call deferred is a useful method to allow you to call other functions after the current frame has finished processing. So call deferred will call character setup during idle time. Then when character setup is called, we will wait until after the first physics frame. This will allow for a smoother setup of our navigation agent before we start to move between different targets. So at the top of the script, let's add another export variable, which is navigation agent 2D and the type is navigation agent 2D. Then in the set movement target function, we will say var target position, which is of type vector2 equals navigation server 2D dot map get random point function, as in navigation agent 2D dot get navigation map. Then the second parameter is navigation agent 2D dot navigation layers. And the third parameter is false. On the next line, let's say navigation agent 2D dot target position equals our current target position. Then at the top of the script, add a new variable called speed with a type of float. Then export two new variables and we need a minimum speed, which is a type of float and we'll default this to five. Then a maximum speed, which will also default to 10. Then back in the set movement target function, we can say speed equals and then use the rand f range function and pass in the minimum speed, the maximum speed. And what this will do is it will set the default speed value and it will choose a speed between five and 10. So that each chicken that we add to the scene will all get a different speed. And this will allow for some variation with each of the characters. Now in the on physics process method, let's write the code which actually moves the chicken character. So let's start with for target position, which is a type of vector two equals the navigation agent 2D variable dot get next path position. Then say for target direction, which is also a type of vector two equals our export variable character dot global position and then direction to the target position. So this will get the facing direction that our character is facing towards. The next step is to get our animated sprite 2D and then use dot flip h equals the target direction dot x, which is the axis value. And if this is less than zero, then we want to flip the chicken. Then say character dot velocity equals our target direction 
multiply by speed, then character dot move and slide to process the movement of our character. Now we are not using delta in our calculation because the character will use the delta time inside of the move and slide. So we, all we need to do is to calculate the target direction by speed and assign that to velocity. Internally, delta will be calculated for us. Then click on the walk state and for navigation agent 2D, let's just assign our navigation agent 2D and click OK. Now we are ready to test the chicken. So click on test scene NPC chicken and then run our test scene. So the chicken is currently in idle and now the chicken is starting to walk. But what we'll do is we'll enable some debugging so that we can see the line that the chicken is walking along. So in the chicken scene, click on navigation agent 2D, scroll down in the inspector until you see debug and then just click enabled. Let's head back to the test scene and run again. And as you can see, we now have a debug line and the chicken is walking along. However, as you can see, there's a thick staircase effect and this is making the chicken bounce quite a lot up and down. So let's just stop that. There is a way to make that line much more sharper. And what we can do, we can go to project, project settings and in window, instead of stretch mode being on viewport, let's change this to canvas items. Let's close the window and then test the scene again. As you can see, the line is much thinner and is reducing that staircase effect. Let's close the window. So I'll just run the scene one more time. So using canvas items in conjunction with a navigation agent 2D can help reduce or eliminate the staircase effect due to the fact that it does have improved interpolation features. So the movement can be smoothed out between the waypoints. The agent's movement can be interpolated to create smoother curves and transitions between those path points and it just results in a more fluid motion and that just reduces the staircase effect. Now as you can see, the chicken, once it reaches the last waypoint, we need to generate a new waypoint. So let's do that. So head back to the chicken scene, click on the walk state script and in the on physics process, we just want to check if the navigation agent 2D has finished moving. So we'll say if navigation agent 2D dot is navigation finished, then call set movement target again and then return from the function. Now let's test the scene again. So just choose test scene NPC chicken again and then just run that test scene. So the chicken is now going to move to the first waypoint. Then the navigation finished and generated another waypoint. As the chicken approaches the second waypoint, a third one will also be created. But as you can see, the chicken keeps on walking and we are not going back to the idle state. So let's just solve that. Let's close the window. So go back to chicken and then the walk state script. And in our on next transitions method, let's copy the if statement. So if navigation agent 2D is navigation finished, then set the velocity to zero and transition to idle. Then let's just test the scene one more time. So the chicken is now walking to our first waypoint. Then the chicken current state is idle and we can see that in the output window. So the chicken again is walking to the second waypoint. It's currently walking and now the chicken is currently in idle. So that is currently working. Our next step is to consider many chickens in our navigation region all at the same time. And how will those agents avoid each other? So if we click on navigation agent 2D, there is a section under avoidance where we can turn this feature on. However, our script will need to be updated so that we do manage our avoidance when it is enabled and when it is not enabled. So first, head over to the test scene and with the chicken scene, let's just right click and duplicate this scene. Let's just go to our 2D view and let's just move our chicken into a new position. Let's just duplicate 
our chicken again and then let's move the chicken again and let's just put a fourth one on there okay now let's run and test the scene and let's just wait for them to begin moving now as you can see this cluster of chickens here are all colliding with each other and they are not really performing any avoidance so let's just stop the scene and let's just modify the script and then enable our avoidance so back on our chicken scene and then on the walk state script and in the ready method let's say navigation agent 2d velocity computed signal and then connect and we will create a function called on safe velocity computed so underneath the function on physics process create a function called on safe velocity computed with a parameter called safe velocity which is a type of vector 2 and will return void then back in the on physics process method after animated sprite 2d dot flip let's just return here and create a variable velocity which is a vector 2 equals and then just copy this code here then say if navigation agent 2d dot avoidance enabled then say navigation agent 2d dot velocity equals our velocity variable here above else sign velocity to our character's velocity so just replace that bit of code here then just tab the character dot move slide so if the avoidance is enabled we then set velocity to navigation agent 2d and this will then cause the on safe velocity computed signal to be called and this function will be called here so if we do enable the avoidance then what we want to do is to assign velocity to safe velocity which is calculated for us and then in here we will call a character dot move and slide so if the avoidance is disabled we just sign the velocity as normal and then we also perform move and slide so now that the script is complete let's go back to our test scene and then run our test scene so as you can see the agents here have just tried to avoid each other and and again you can see them avoiding here and we can see the agents also avoiding again here too now as you can see the distance between the agents is possibly too large so let's just close the scene go back onto the chicken scene and on navigation agent 2d and if we just look at the sprite here we could probably reduce the radius to about five so back on navigation agent 2d let's just reduce the radius to five and then let's test the scene again so as we can see the agents are avoiding each other yet the distance is much better for the avoidance now to finish off our walk state script let's introduce some walk cycles we can auto generate some walk cycles so that some chickens only move for two walk cycles then go to idle and other chickens may move three or four or maybe five walk cycles and then go back to idle it will just introduce some more randomization for the chickens in our game so head over to our chicken scene then go to scenes and characters folder and in the root folder create a new script and call this non-playable character let's open that script give the class name as non-playable character and just extend that from character body 2d then export a variable called min walk cycle which is type int and then export a variable max walk cycle of type int then declare another variable called walk cycles and that is also type int now on our chicken scene node here let's just attach a new script and in the scenes characters and chicken folder let's just save our new chicken script just create that then on the extends we will say non playable character now let's hop over back to our non playable character script and in the min walk cycle let's give this a default value of 2 and for the max walk cycle a default value of 6 and then on the chicken script let's override our ready function and we'll say walk cycles equals 
Rand I range pass in min watt cycles and max watt cycle. Now the Rand I range function will return a value between two and six. So if we just go back to the non-playable character script, we have set these default values here and we also need a current walk cycle, which is also a type of int. Now let's head over to our walk state script and where we export this variable here, let's just change this to be non-playable character. And this will give us access to these variables here. So in the walk state script, we can now go to the on physics process method, say character dot current walk cycle plus equals one. Then in the on next transitions method, instead of saying if navigation agent 2D is navigation finished, we can say character dot current walk cycle is equal to the characters walk cycles. So if the walk cycles is set to three, as we go through each walk cycle, once the current walk cycle equals three, it will then go into idle. Well, let's set a breakpoint here on line 34. Let's set a breakpoint here on line 55. Let's go to our test scene and let's just remove these three chickens so that we've only got the one chicken in the scene. Now, let's just test our scene. As you can see, the chicken is currently in the idle state. Then if we click remote here and choose our chicken scene, we have generated an automatic number for walk cycles, which is four, and our current walk cycle is zero. So press F12, and we'll just remove the breakpoint here, and we'll just reset it on here. So now the chicken is moving, and the chicken is now hit, its navigation is finished. So if we look again in the remote, and then click on chicken, the current walk cycle has now been incremented to one. So let's press F12 again, so the chicken has hit the second walk cycle and the chicken is moving and the chicken's hitting the next walk cycle. So we're in current walk cycle three and now the chicken is going to hit it again and we've now got a current walk cycle of four. So we just F12 that and we can now see that on the next transition has been called and we're going to now transition into idle. Just F12 that. So now the chicken is currently in the idle state. But what we need to do is to then reset the character current walk cycle back to zero. So let's just stop that. When we always enter the state, let's make sure that our current walk cycle is zero. So in the under enter method, we'll just say character dot current walk cycle equals zero here. Let's go back to our test scene NPC chicken, and then let's just duplicate our chicken. So I'm just going to put many on here for now. And then I'm going to go back to chicken and on navigation agent 2D, I'm just going to turn off the debug or the navigation agent and then go back to test scene NPC chicken and then let's run that current test scene. So we've got a couple of chickens in idle here now. And some more in idle again here. And another chicken in idle here and another one here. So we've created a randomized effect for our chickens. Let's stop the scene. And now for our final improvement for the walk state script, we are using target direction to flip the sprite based on which direction the character is moving in. However, when we use avoidance, when a character is avoiding another character, it may temporarily want to switch direction as it avoids and then switch back because it is going to the waypoint which is intended. So copy this line and then paste the line just under the if statement here and then copy the velocity parameter and paste it over target direction. Then copy the line again and in on safe velocity computed, let's just paste that then copy safe velocity and paste it over the velocity parameter and that will resolve flipping our sprite. Now that brings us to the end of this tutorial on how to create a non-playable character which can move freely using a navigation region and navigation agents. 
we have also looked at avoidance of other non-playable characters within our navigation region. Our non-playable character is also using a state machine and can move from the idle state into walk state and have walk cycles, which gives the characters just a little bit of variation on how they are moving around in your game. If you really like what you've seen in this tutorial, please remember to hit like and subscribe and receive future updates of my other tutorials. Thank you for watching.